To get started, my name is John Lee with St. Louis Real Estate Investors Association. Today is Friday, March the 4th, 2022. And Ms. Davis, uh, it's good to see you. What do you have for us today? Hi. Well, um, things are, they seem to be getting better. You know, we, I felt like we were coming out of COVID and then we got hit with all those winter storms and the courts kept shutting down for that. <laughs> and we feel like years ago, they never shut the courts down. And, but since they shut down during COVID so much that they kind of learned how to do it and they got used to it and you know they started, oh, it might snow, we better shut down. <laughs> so um, we have our big docket in the county on Thursdays. So since a lot of these storms hit on Thursday, um, a lot of stuff got moved to next week. So we have a lot of cases on next week. So that'll be exciting. Um, the big news from the county is that supposedly the next round of summonses that goes out for April court dates is going to not give WebEx instructions and the people are going to have to appear in person. Right now it's a hybrid and they can appear in person or remotely as they choose. And that's, it's difficult for us as attorneys, um, you know, to manage that because it's easier to manage the remote people when we're here at the office. And of course, the in-person people at the courthouse, we can sort of manage the remote people from the courthouse in the county. <clears throat> in the city, the connection's not that good, but um, it's a lot to do. And we, it's faster and more efficient for us anyway to talk to the people in person. And I also think that, you know, we're all being inconvenienced when we have to sue them. They should be inconvenienced a little bit too and have to show up. <laughs> We've also seen more of them when they beam them in from their living rooms and cars and that kind of thing, then maybe we would really like to. <coughs> and, you know, the pets, the kids yelling at the person, we've had people that have appeared from bed. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's certainly been an experience. So we don't know yet when the city is gonna do that, but we're hoping that they will follow quickly behind the county and start to do everything in person there. They are now allowing you to appear in person if you if you choose, or you can appear by WebEx if you choose. And, you know, if we're suing any of your tenants and they want or complain about going to court, tell them to get there early because we're there early and we'll get them in and out really quickly if they can come early um, rather than wait through the whole docket. And the WebEx dockets take a long time. And it's not just, you know, um, inappropriate behavior. People don't know if they're muted or not. On Wednesday, Judge Perkins in the city actually kicked a couple people off the WebEx because they wouldn't behave. <laughs> I was, uh, we were, we were thrilled. <laughs> um, it ended up though with not maybe so great for us because those got set for trial. So now our client's going to have to come down and we'll have a trial, but you know, we'll win the trials. I mean, <coughs> and I can see from the judge's point of view, he's got a hundred people online. He can't have one person talking all the time and not muting and not listening and cussing and, and all that, you know, it has to come to a stop. So that's mostly what I know. I'm hearing that there is still rental assistance available and people are still applying for it. And they're telling me I just got approved and you know, that kind of thing. So I guess that's still out there. I really don't know. Um, I don't have much information personally about uh, how much money they have left or how that's going. So does anybody have any questions? You said that was uh, the county that's going back to live uh, in person <laughs> on location yeah, heard, uh, court dates. We've heard that the summonses that are going to come out for the April court dates are going to be not having a WebEx option, just, you know, regular summons, like in the before times appear in person. And here you go. Okay. I'll bet you got some good stories now, though, with all the people that uh, got kicked out and all that. kind of. Oh, my gosh. Stuff. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, you know, the other stuff that I do um, here, you know, the quiet titles and the partitions and the ejectments, all the circuit stuff, we're hoping that that will start moving more quickly, too. Um, the county, um, courthouse is not requiring masks as of this week. However, judges individually have the discretion to require masks in their division. Mm -hmm. So probably you're all doing what I do is I have a mask with me. And if someone wants me to put it on, I'll put it on. Yeah. And if I don't have to put it on, I generally don't put it on. Yeah. 
I'm just coughing because of the dry air. I don't know. Oh. But, um, <laughs> now, the, just, the, the mask mandate is supposed to expire this weekend. So I guess in the city courts, it's going to be the same. The judge can say if they want it on you in that particular courtroom, but mostly you won't have to. Okay. Well, that, that sounds like a good policy. Um, just uh, for my own curiosity, what, <coughs> what is a quiet title taking nowadays, uh, approximately? Um, I know there's been some delays, but what the process well, normally? It depends on whether the person really wants to go to trial. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that we're going to kind of getting past the delays with the courts and, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, they've had problems too. Mm -hmm. You know, particularly with this Omicron where everybody and their brother got the virus, they had a lot of clerks that were out. They had some judges that got sick, even people that were vaccinated or, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, it's been... In, in normal times, we could just, I could go over to the courthouse if something was hung up and track down the clerk and, you know, figure it out. Now, sometimes no one's there and you have to try to track them down on the phone. And, you know, if someone doesn't want to talk to you on the phone, you know, they can easily avoid that. So, um, right. but that we think that's starting to speed up and, you know, they're starting to have more jury trials and that kind of thing. I, I heard they're up to five a week in the city, oh, five wow. jury trials a week in the city. They were doing only two. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure where it is in the county, but that's going to cut down the backlog. 90% of this stuff settles if you can just get a trial date. So it gets in front of a judge who will give you a firm trial date. You're going to work the case out and then move a slot for somebody else. And then, of course, the Rams lawsuit settling in the city freed up a lot of court time and jurors and, you know, that kind of thing. Big disappointment. We were going to be entertained by it, but, <laughs> you know, that, uh, that uh, sadly didn't happen. So huh? anybody else got anything? Have any questions? Need anything? Y'all good? Hey, Kathy, this is Shannon. I'm just curious, like how long will it take to get a court date once the eviction is filed? Um, our court dates are coming in about three or four weeks. I filed a city one this week that got a court date of March 16th. And I think in the county right now, I think we're getting... Um, Wait, let me look. March 24th. My attorney filed a case two weeks ago and still does not get a court date. Is it normal? Uh, in what county? San Luis County. They should have a court date by now. Okay. All right, thank you. I don't know why that would be. Well, I will say this about St. Louis County. They're down a judge right now, an associate. In the middle of the pandemic, they cut us back from six to five associate civil judges because the caseload was down. But now that, you know, particularly all the collection lawyers and everybody are filing again, um, the caseload's bopping back up and uh, they still only have five judges. And right now we only have four because one of the judges got promoted to circuit court and another judge had previously gotten promoted to circuit court. So the judge who took her place is new. So um, that could add some time, I guess. In our division, we're getting fast court dates. We're motoring right along. So um, I got a client here. I got to do a beneficiary deed for. So I'm going to go do that. And I hope that you all are enjoying the nicer weather and mask-free restaurants and all that kind of thing. I drove to a, a lawyer event at the Ritz last night and I drove through Clayton and all the restaurants had valets and cars and they were busy. And I felt so happy about all that. So mm. everybody um, go to a fish fry or have fun tonight and we'll see you next month. In the meantime, Thanks. if anybody needs anything, call me. Thank you so much, Kathy. We really okay. appreciate it. Have a great nice weekend. Nice to see everybody. Thanks. All right, good update. Um, sounds like good news in, in our area. <clears throat> okay, anybody have anything that they got for sale or they wanna buy or they need help with? This is, uh, this is your opportunity to speak up. Feel free to unmute yourself or put it in the chat or whatever works for you. Hi, this is Lynn and Jeannie. Hi. Uh, hi, how are you today? Great, you? Good. good. 
uh, just got a uh, single family split foyer in Imperial, Missouri, uh, three bed, three bath, three full bath, um, asking 147 comps in that area between 220 and 230. Be happy to send additional information and pictures to anybody that's interested. Okay, would you like to put your contact information in our chat for us, please, Lynn? Yes, I will do that. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay, it sounds like a good opportunity for someone. And for details, get a hold of uh, get a hold of Lynn here. So. Okay, does anybody, uh, anybody else have anything they'd like to share with us? I see a lot of smiling faces out there. <laughs> okay, well, I can, I, I'll tell you about our March 15th uh, meeting. We do have a couple of, couple of shared announcements here. Um, <clears throat> our main event will be Let's see, it's going to be at the Moolah Shrine Center again. Of course, we're, have, we're on location. We're going to have Beth Coleman from Guild Mortgage. She's going to give us some updates on some trends and what's going on around town here. She's, um, she's a local mortgage, uh, mortgage person, so that'll be, that'll be real good. She, we, she was uh, with us, I guess, uh, was it last year or the year before? And she did a, um, an online with, with our Zoom when we first started doing that, and she's very knowledgeable and very helpful so if, if you can at all make it in person please do because uh, she'll be there we also um for our early bird session we have uh eric wheeler and he is uh like a kind of like i call him a master tech person i'm not sure what his official uh title is but he's gonna um he's working right now with helping people that's uh set up websites so if you need a website or if you even if you have one, you don't know what you're doing, um, he's going to be he's going to fill us in on some stuff on on our, our Tuesday night on the 15th. And then he's setting up a, he set up a workshop for us. And I'm, I'm going to kind of help him on that because I want to learn more about it, too. On Thursday night, um, let's see, the March 27th from 6 to 9 p.m. And I, and I believe he's it's uh, there is a cost for that. It's three hundred ninety seven dollars. Um, and that's your complete showing you everything that's what the hosting and everything is showing you from like start to finish how to set up your website the only other thing i know you'll have to do because i talked to him the other day about that is you will have to buy a domain name or a url which they're not very expensive there's a place name cheap uh, dot com where i buy most of mine and you can get depending on what name you want you can get them for about eight bucks or i've had some as low as a dollar 98 for the first year and then or eight dollars to renew so you can just look at that, or you could ask me more about that. Then he's going to have a follow-up the following week, um, just kind of like to make sure if you have any questions, because I know if you're like me, if you, everything sounds good when you go through the workshop, and then you run into stuff that you you know you may need help with. So he's going to, he's agreed to come back and do a follow-up workshop. That was kind of my idea too, because uh, I know most of us need, you know, every week down the road, we need a little bit more help. So he's going to do that. And um, then he's also going to have this uh, the workshop recorded. We're going to record that live. I'm going to um, volunteer to help them with that. And then that way you'll have access to it. So you can go back and watch this from now on. So if anybody's interested in that, just be sure to tune in on March the 15th uh, and be there early for Eric at, uh, at 630. We'll have more, more um, info coming about out about Eric and about Beth Coleman. Uh, emails, watch your emails. Uh, also watch your spam and overflow because a lot of the stuff, your bulk kind of goes in there. I know mine does. I found something again this morning that I should have got a couple of days ago um, and it should have just came right to me. But sometimes these uh, alg algorithms or filters or whatever they use these days separate stuff where, you know, like they want to do it. So anyway, be sure and, do, and tune in on the 15th. If at all possible, please show up. Um, there's nothing like an on person, um, you know, on location in person event. So, ah, so that's all I got to say. <laughs> Does anybody have anything that they would like to say? Good time to do it. Well, John, for planning purposes, uh, can you talk about our April meeting maybe so people can uh, make sure they don't plan anything for that date? 
at all. Sure. Um, April. Um, do you know what day that is, Jim? I think it's April 18th, if I remember right. Yeah, let me see. I got my calendar here. But yeah, we have Kevin Chartel coming um, coming in town um, for notes. Uh, he is a note expert. April 19th. I apologize. It is the 19th. That's what I see right here. OK. And we are going to have something really special for those that do make it in person. Uh, on location, we are going to have some type of meal. We're not sure what yet. We're still kind of developing that. And I'm sure we'll know a little bit more at our next board meeting. Um, the March meeting comes up pretty quick here, which is, uh, well, it's what, a week and a half, not even a week and a half from now. So and our board meeting is the next week, so we'll have more details. But uh, yeah, mark your calendars now for April the 19th. So he, he he's, uh, I know, Jim, you know a little bit more than I, I do, but he, he's really good at, at notes as far as. He's very good at notes. He used to work for uh, Eddie Speed at Note School, and he split off. And he's got his own course and everything. It's a it's a lot less expensive than Note School's course, and he gives you a lot of support. He has a every other Wednesday a Zoom call that you can subscribe to, and he's he's very one on one if if needed. I mean, he'll 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 uh, get with you one on one via Zoom or phone if you've got any questions or uh, need help with a note, uh, buying, selling, you know, whatever. So. Uh, I, I think he's very good. And like I said, the, uh, the, the course, I bought the course a while ago. I think the price has gone up, but uh, the course is a, is a lot less expensive than uh, note schools. And uh, it does teach you a lot. If, if, if somebody wanted to get into notes, basically you, you're getting your monthly payments, but you don't have the landlord responsibilities or the property responsibilities or liabilities. You're the bank, as John says, mm -hmm. and uh, notes notes are a good way to kind of invest in real estate, but not get your hands, not have to do a lot of work with your hands, no rehab, no nothing. So it's, mm -hmm. I think it's pretty good. And if you it, and if you want to get your hands dirty, there are non-performing notes. So you can you can find some non-performing notes, uh, do a uh, foreclosure or whatever, and pick up properties that way too. But as as always, do your due diligence. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. Thank you, Jimmy. I, I love notes myself. I love just uh, playing with paper. That's uh, in my my fingernails are a lot cleaner than they used to be too. <laughs> So I, I recommend everybody at least do one or two or, you know, one of the things I've done a lot of is the, uh, the small deals where I like to show you where you just take, you know, start getting the game, you know, buy something for a couple hundred bucks, turn it into a monthly income that goes on for a few years, you know, um, and not to do a self plug, but I do have my, my latest book coming out Monday. So if you want a free copy of it, um, go to Kindle or go to uh, Amazon on Monday, you can get a copy of it and it shows you exactly what I do. And I got a lot of stuff I put in there, including some of the downloads and farms, which I, uh, I've used over the years and refined. And this is what I use today. So I had people ask me about it. I said, the best thing I could do is just update my book, which I didn't know it was going to be a year long project, but here we are. <laughs> so, so happy to do that, but notes. Yeah. Be sure and show up if nothing else for the free meal in, um, on April 19th, but do not just for that, come in and learn something. And I'll tell you, Kevin is one of the smartest guys out there on notes. I mean, he explains it well. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to him several times on the phone and by, by, by zoom, actually by zoom is a great nowadays because we can kind of get on there and, and talk to each other like we're doing now. I mean, unlike what, I mean, I, we've been doing this for maybe eight years with some of my groups, but never realized the power we have now. Um, I mean, just like with Kathy talking about the, you know, the they went to WebEx, which I'm not a big fan of because just for different reasons, but I think Zoom's a little bit more user friendly, but we can do stuff now we could never do before. And it's just, uh, and we can re record it, go back and watch it. So there's never any, uh, any question like on my notes, because sometimes I write down notes so quick because even like I am now, but then uh I write so fast I can't even read my own writing half the time, and it's not—it's not really a joke because it really does happen. But, but we got this now that we can we can do this. So, uh, yeah, be sure and show up on the nineteenth if at all possible. Mark your calendars. I'm not sure what kind of meal we're going to have. We've tossed around. I know we have uh, some different choices than we used to have at the uh, the old uh, old place at the Realtor Building. Now with the Moolah, they have a, a lot more choices uh, that they'll have on location for us. So it'll be fun. We'll see what. Uh, 
We'll see what we can come up with. It'll be something spectacular, though. I'll guarantee you. Unique. How's that? <laughs> Depending on your taste. So, anybody have anything they want to buy, sell that they're working on? Hey, John. Uh, this is James. I have a question. Yeah, James. I, I was wondering if uh, anyone has um, some experience with au uh, public uh, auction and, uh, about the the house and the, the lots, uh, empty lots as well. Uh, do do we have um, uh, do we need to get a lawyer and you know before we go and take the auction and, and what other things that we need to prepare? Thanks. Are you looking to buy buy a, a lot? Is that what you're doing here, James? I, I missed the first house part. and lots. I'm sorry, I missed Good the first option. part. Are you trying? Are you trying to straighten up a title? Or are you just buying them, or what are you trying to do with them? So, uh, so there, there are some public uh, auction that you can buy. Okay. Um, right, you can participate. Right, so you know, yeah, say, yeah, say, mm, yeah, you can, you can start a bid from one thousand to ten thousand, things like that, or, or maybe even higher. Okay, so you're talking about an auction now. Is this from a government entity such as a city or county um, for like tax, a tax sale auction or, is, or what kind of auction is this, James? Uh, I'm not very sure. I think it's either from, I think it's from city. Okay. Okay, because the city's a little different than the county. Uh, I've, I've never bought anything from the city. Um, there's probably, you know, I'd have to see see more about that, but I um, I would definitely do my due diligence ahead of time. Um, you know, if you're interested in bidding on a property, one of the things I've done in the past is gotten uh, just a, a letter report from a title company on the property. It costs maybe 150 bucks or so, but it usually gives you, it's not a full title search or anything like that, but it will give you everybody. I know in the quiet, quiet title, like we kind of briefly touched on that earlier, if you're going to get a quiet title down the road, that's the way I, you know, that I've done it. And then you had to have your attorney go ahead and get the quiet title. Now, I don't know what, what the city does. I imagine you'll still have the title issues for that, because I know a lot of times they'll tell you, different people will tell you that you're going to get a free and clear title if you buy something at auction. That's not 100% accurate most of the time, with my experience anyway. Um, a lot of times it's, it's good, depending on what you're going to do with it. Um, but yeah, I would I would have to see more more uh, what, what the city is doing with that. But does anybody else have anything they that they want to that they know about the uh, process in the city? Do they like to yeah. share? Yeah. Hey, John, I'll drop the um, contact information. I'm going to look it up for Dale Sweet. He's one of the, if you remember, one of the lawyers um, that does the um, that does classes on auctions in the city. So I'll drop his contact information. Thank you, Amber. Yeah, I was going to kind of agree with John, especially if you buy something from auction.com and places like that. I would say really do your due diligence. And I think it's a good idea to, to check the title beforehand because I'm not sure how they can guarantee, you know, how they're going to guarantee a clear title. So I'd be, I'd, I'd do yeah, do your due diligence if you're going to go that way. That's a, that's a good way to do it too. I've, I've done lots of quiet, I haven't done it myself, but I've, I've paid for lots of them. quiet titles with my, uh, my attorney and there's different ways that they do it. They normally um, it's, it's actually the most fun I've ever had at court because I've always won, you know, you walk in there and the, nobody's ever shown up as far as a, um, as far as a defendant goes. And I've had as many as 54 defendants on one quiet title lawsuit. And, um, you know, people that could have shown up, this is relatives, this is the, even the city of like Park Hills and Farmington and stuff like that. Nobody ever shows up. Uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, any of the, the places I've had, um, you know, that were on the title, they just don't show up. And actually, you can just, uh, you just walk out of there with a clear, a clear title. And even before I've had the paperwork back from the court, I've walked into real estate office and had them list it right, right away. And I've actually sold some of my properties within a week before I even got the stuff back from the court. So it's a, it's a process, but it's, it's not as hard as a lot of people like to think it is.
Okay, yeah, Amber dropped, uh, let's see, Dale Sweets. Uh, yeah, Beck Ostrom. I, yeah, I'm not sure either if he's, they're still at the same place. I know they, they have changed a little bit. Um, and that's, that's something we'll find out, but that, that's a good place to start right there. And they're, they're uh, probably one of the most knowledgeable firms. I know Dale is in probably our area here, right in St. Louis here. So th thank you, Amber. Thank you. All right, anybody else got anything they want to say? Anybody looking for anything? Anybody got anything to sell? Hi, John, it's Ann. Hi, Ann. Um, I put a little note in the chat box that uh, we may be coming upon a house in South City. It's on Iowa, small two bedroom house. We know the owners went out but we've not looked in it yet. So I don't have the details. Um, I, I know it's been habit, you know, lived in right now currently. So at least it's in some decent condition, but um, if anyone's interested, they can send me an email. And as, as we get access and know more information, we can forward that on. Okay, great. Thank you, Andy. I see your, uh, I see your info right here. Uh, so you got your email address here. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in a two bedroom house in South city, um, please give Anna a jingle here. And as soon as she has the info, she'll send it in. Okay. Here's uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, and here's the one from Lynn and Jean uh, Imperial. She's got her information in there. That could be a good project for, for someone here. And, and, and let's see here. Okay. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share today? Or looking for? Got anything? To sell? Buy? Need help with something? I mean, Lloyd's not with us today. He's got a bad cold. He said this morning, but um, I would guess he's still looking for a place to park his uh, his motor home. So I've been keeping that in mind, uh, trying to find a lot in the city here that has a cover and electric that doesn't have a lot of liens on the back of it. <laughs> but anybody else? Uh, Anybody have anything like that or anything they want to share with us? Thanks, John. Just continue to look. This is Ann. Just continue to look because I'm waiting also. With, with life. <laughs> okay, Ann. <Thank> you. <laughs> okay, got you in mind too. <laughs> okay. I'm going to find one too. Don't think I won't. <laughs> Cause I drive by the, there's one place on 55 that I drive by. I've been driving by for, I don't know, years and years and years. And they recently turned that into a big storage area. It used to be like a collection place for junk. It looked like with uh, construction, uh, construction type vehicles that were broke down. Now, if you look at going South, it's to be on your left side, it's huge place and they've covered all of it. And there's mo probably hundreds of motorhomes, at least a hundred, I'm guessing, plus a big equipment. And I thought if they're each getting, $500 or so a spot for that with electric and out of the weather, that's got to be a good deal for somebody. And that, that somebody might as well be me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm thinking. So, right. so or for anybody else, anybody else uh, find a place, uh, we can partner up on it. <laughs> Always looking for deals. Okay, got a lot of quiet people today. Anybody else got anything they want to share? Are they everybody ready for lunch? Probably so. Yeah, I got up real early this morning again too, last couple of days. So maybe I'll have an early lunch today. This is the time though. Anybody got anything to say? Uh, I'll add a comment question just maybe for discussion. Mm -hmm. We have a, it's kind of a three bedroom. It's in, again, South City. Um, it's ours. We're not going to sell it. We're not looking to sell it, but it's vacant. And I say kind of three bedroom because the third bedroom's small. So it's below the 72 square feet that the city requires for a bedroom um, that we will be renting out. <laughs> And we're kind of thinking about 
reaching out to the Section 8 folks on that. And, and I know there's good, bad with Section 8, but there is regular tenants as well. So I wondered if anyone wanted to share their short stories and, and experiences with um, Section 8 or other programs. I've got one Section 8 house, but my property manager manages it. And it's nice. You get a check every, uh, well, not a check, but you get, depo you get deposited into your account uh, every month. And like you said, there's good and bad tenants, both Section 8 and regular. You just got to do your due diligence. Section 8 tenants do have an incentive, though, to be good tenants, because if they're bad, you can't evict them. And if you, they get evicted, they could probably lose their voucher status. So they don't want to do that. So like anything else, do your due diligence. But no, if you find the right Section 8 tenant, it's great. You don't have to worry about them coming up with them with the money each month. Did you do this reading for your section eight or your property manager? My property manager did, but I know when I looked into it a few years ago, St. Louis County, that's where it is, uh, housing authority on natural bridge. They had a monthly section eight landlord meeting or whatever. And I went to that a couple of times. So if they still have that, I don't know if they have it in person anymore. Uh, they can answer a lot of your questions. And they'll talk. They'll tell you all about the program. And they they were the first ones to admit that. Yeah, there are bad Section Eight tenants, but you know they 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 do their best, and you can't complain to their caseworker or whatever too, if there's a problem and they can get involved. So uh, you might want to call the housing authority, at least, at least in St. Louis County, see if they, they still have the uh, Section 8 uh, landlord monthly meetings. So, uh, did you say your house was in St. Louis County or city? This is uh, an apartment in the city. Oh, okay, no. so I called not too long ago um, and got the information. They don't do it in person anymore. Um, it's an email. The lady was really nice and it, you just have to read through everything, but it's all in the email. Um, I can see if I still have it, but I mean, it's, it's on you and it's your due diligence. And I second everything um, that Jim just said, just make sure you get a good tenant in there and that, you know, that's going to take care of your property. But it is not a monthly meeting anymore. Um, they canceled that. I'm sure I'm assuming because of COVID, but you, you receive an email with all the information you need. Thanks. Yeah, I did mine a few years ago before COVID, so I don't, don't know. Thank you, Amber. Great information. I'm, I'm a, a fairly big fan of Section 8. We've had them down in um, other counties, too. I think they call it Southeast Missouri, something or other. And the, the key is, just like you said, um, is having I you know, having, having it screened and do your due diligence up front because we've had good ones and we had, we've only had really one bad one. And they do get kicked out, just like Jim said. There was a lady we had. It was actually um, in St. Louis County. Um, and my property manager, she did a bunch of stuff and she moved in her, uh, her son that shouldn't have been on there, wasn't on the voucher. And this poor woman was in a wheelchair, but they actually got her kicked out uh, because of the stuff and they destroyed a lot of the house. And she, she lost her voucher and she is not eligible for Section 8 anymore. So it's really important for the tenant and they most of them know that to be a good tenant. Then again, you what you got to realize too is nowadays they can take um, the county. They like county. Was it city vouchers better than county? I believe if I remember right. But they can take a city voucher and go to the county. Um, so there's something about it. I don't remember what it is. You'll have to check with somebody that knows more. But um, they are. It's a lot better, I guess, than it used to be because people are really, you know, they really do know that they can get kicked out, and they do it. So. <laughs> But there you get your money, just like Jim said, it's usually a little bit, they don't set the rents, but they will okay it based on market uh, values. And you can set your, your rents usually a little bit higher than what you might get on the commercial, uh, on the commercial side. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can get the information or not, but I have a, uh, associate friend or a uh, investor friend that has a section eight 
and he was told it was due to his disability. And he saw, thought that was, he, he thought that was great, okay and could do the modifications at the house. And that he, uh, after they moved in a couple months, uh, he found out that it was a, uh, not physical, but mental disability. And um, they had problems uh, staying on their meds and the police were over there uh, with neighbors and the resident with fights and gunshots. And so I don't know if it's correct to find out what kind of disability it is, but uh, might, might be something to think about. Anyway, it's probably not politically correct to talk about that. Yeah, one of my thoughts too is, you know, if we have a usual standard, um, you know, our guidelines for tenants three times the rent for their income, most section eight probably don't have that, which is why they're on section eight. So am I really ready to adjust my guidelines on that? Well, it's, it's, it's it, if, if they have a voucher, my understanding, you know, you're guaranteed to get paid. I would not, uh, you don't have to, you know, change your other guidelines though, that you use to find a good tenant. Because, um, that, and like I said, uh, do you do own due diligence, but I've never had any problem getting a, uh, getting a check every month or deposit, direct deposit every month from them. Yeah, I think the conversation is really, so for section eight, you set the, the amount of rent that you're getting. And let's say you're, you want $1,200. Well, the, from what I recently just read, you know, the tenant is responsible for, I believe it's 30 to 40% of their weekly income or their monthly income goes to their um, housing. So to Jim's point, if you set the rent at $1,200, you're, you're going to get the bulk of that from the program. So if the tenant is late, you, I mean, you just have to run your numbers. If the tenant is late or if they're not making their payment, you're still going to make get your money because it's guaranteed money from the state. Yeah. And if I remember right, that percentage, and you can correct me, Amber, because it's been a while, that also include all the utilities and everything, too, I thought. I thought it was just their living expenses. It wasn't just the rent. But I could um, that, that could be right. That sounds about right. So... So, which means that they're that, that the uh, government does pay even a little extra than the than that. So, but yeah, I do 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 same same checking that you would do with a regular tenant, uh, prior landlords, um, you know, criminal investigation, whatever. And be picky if you want. I mean, that's the truth of the yeah. matter. There's so many people out there with vouchers that do not have, we have a housing crisis in the, in the U.S. So if you don't want the first one that comes across because, you know, they don't meet your criteria, go with, trust me, there will be somebody else that comes through that does meet your criteria. Correct. Thank you. Now so there is. Comments. I was, I was going to say there is a separate uh, Section 8 in, inspection, too, if I remember right. And sometimes they could be a little bit stricter than the city inspector. But uh, it was, it was you know, I had to do a few things to the house, but it wasn't anything that was, you know, I got mad at that I wanted to argue with them about. But they, oh. they, were, pick, they were picking a few things. That's exactly what I was going to say. Picky um, and <laughs> is a great word for it because I've heard you, you, most people do not pass Section 8 the or the uh, inspection the first, first go around. It could be little things I've heard of them not passing because there's dust on the outside light fixture. You know, it, it, it's their job to really make sure that this, this place is ready to go. So I would not be surprised if you don't pass the first go around.
Yeah, Jim, uh, Melody wants to know if you would share your property manager. Sure. Is that? Uh, I will, uh, let me let me look up her number. It's mm -hmm. Jean Lake Properties. And I've been working with Shelly. And if Amber doesn't want to, doesn't mind, Amber, I think you've used uh, Shelly too, haven't you? I spoke to her this week. Yeah, I just actually saw her yesterday when I walked through my Spanish lake house. Uh, so I will let, if you have any issues, you know, I don't have a problem with you saying that, uh, but I, I've had good luck with her. So let me, uh, let me find it here. So it's Jean Lake Properties, but Shelly is the one that does most of the work. Jean is kind of slowly going into retirement, I think. <laughs> but uh, Shelly is at 636-299-3176. And she's the one I've been working with. And she does a lot of North County stuff. Uh, I don't know. Amber, have you using her in the city? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, St. Charles, I think. So, yes, I think they're they're mostly everywhere. Any anything else, uh, Melody? OK, <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Jim. That, that's uh, I, I'm a firm believer that you should do some of your own management and then have a property manager that knows more than you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that way you'll learn both aspects and where they're coming from when they when they call you. <laughs> well, what I like about it, what, one of the things I've used them for, they know the market better than I do because I don't do this full time. They know the market. They know when I got my house in Spanish Lake, I was talking to him about what I wanted. And Jean says, oh, no, I can get you more than that. And she got me more than that, a couple hundred dollars more than I thought I would get. Yeah. And I've also talked to her and said, hey, I saw this property at this location. And she'll say, no, 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 no. I don't care what, what the price is. Stay away from that area. Hmm. You know, things that I, I don't know because I'm not in the business daily like they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and plus, their people, she has people that she uses all the time. And they don't take advantage of like i had an air conditioner go out and it was an old air conditioner i figured i'm gonna have to replace it now a couple hundred bucks he fixed it because they're not gonna take advantage of her they might take advantage of me i'm just calling them out of the phone book mm -hmm. but they have a working relationship with a lot of these type people plumbers electricians mm -hmm. you know air conditioning people so uh yeah it's it's worth every penny i i spend on a property manager as far as i'm concerned Yes. Great point, Jim. Thanks. All right. I see uh, Gene Lake Properties. Shelly's the contact, and that's 636-299-3176. Might want to jot that down. It's... Uh, It'll save you a lot of phone calls and a lot of sleepless nights if you let somebody else handle some of the stuff that, I don't know, like in my case, that I'm just not that good at. <laughs> yeah, they don't even have my phone number to call me. So. <laughs> Perfect. <Yeah. laughs> so, great. Anybody else got anything they want to share today? That, um, Property management, that's a good, that's a good subject. Also the section eight, I think that's, uh, that's really something good that a lot of people need to know. And I think it's probably underutilized for a lot of us. You know, I kind of got into it by default because we bought a property that had, um, that had it in down in, uh, uh, actually it was Deloge, Missouri. that had a 16 year um, section eight person in it and we just inherited it. And it turned out to be pretty, pretty decent. And that's first, my first experience. And then we got some up here in St. Louis County and, and city. 
Yeah, that, that's been really, I don't know, pretty good. The inspections is one thing. And I, I think they do look for something. And I, I hate to say it, but uh, maybe just to justify their job, like looking for dust or something. But my experience also, it's never anything that other than to be in a pain because you had to go back and do something. But it was never anything that was major in our, you know, that they came with for us. It was just like a plug wasn't right or, so, you know, it was just little, little things. So, I mean, and I'd much rather have some little things they could, they could find like that than, than to not find anything and find something big. So that's just, uh, that's just my opinion on it though, too, which isn't worth anything <laughs> other than for me. <laughs> so. Hey everyone, this is Raquel. Can you all hear me? Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi. Yeah. I am finishing up. Uh, with the condo here in Chesterfield um, and had some more numbers and cops ran. I'm looking at a property uh, that's identical to mine. I'm looking at the cops. Uh, I know the neighbors moved out. They were in a distress situation with his illness. So they did like nothing, you know, complete no updates, no nothing. And they sold it, you know, for 165 now the same property is back out on the MLS for 220 and it's already on the contract. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, that is such a short time. But long story short, come back to where I'm at. Uh, I have mines uh, ready to sell. I have not put it on the MLS just yet because I'm still moving out of it before I have the cleaners to come in. So I don't know if anyone is interested in it uh, for as investment purposes, probably not because I'm looking for top dollar, but it is 13340 Bragstad Drive. It's in Chesterfield and my zip code is 63141. So it is a, a three bedroom, uh, two and a half bath. Uh, it's about uh, 1,900 square feet, but living space is 1575. Uh, thank you, Raquel. Do you want to put your contact information in our chat? So if anybody wants to- I'm trying to. There? I'm going to tell you I'm not so technical. I'm trying to. I'm on a different phone. Okay. I'm on the Samsung. I have no idea how to type in. I just found out how to speak on it. Yeah. It's okay. Like each, I don't know. It's my take. It's like each each device I do something different with. So forgive me, you all. I'm still trying to find it. I can type it in for you. What would you like to give them as far as contact information? Uh, let's give them 636-675-7143, which is my number. And then let's just give the address. Uh, okay. 13340. Bragstad, and that's B-R-A-G-S-T-A-D-T. Okay, right. hold on. Slow down with the with the spelling of the. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Be street. like boy. That's okay. The street. R like B raft. Okay. Uh, B like boy. R like raft. A like apple. G like girl. S like Sam. T like Tom. A like apple. D like David. T like Tom. Bragstad Drive. Okay, drive. Okay, got it. And that's 63017? Uh, 61. 63141. 41, thank you. Okay, I think I got it. It's uh, 636-675-7143. And we're at uh, 13340 Bragstat Drive, 63041, correct? 63141. 41 has the same zip code as 34. 141, got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate sure. you guys. Certainly. Good luck with your phone. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if anybody's looking for a condo, that looks like a good opportunity there. So. Okay. Anybody else like to share anything today? All right. Well, I guess if we don't have anything else to share, then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and call it a day. Get to lunch a little early today. <clears throat> Not too much early, but 
uh, look forward to seeing you on March the 15th at the Moolash Renter Center. Again, we do have uh, Beth Coleman from Guild Mortgage and then Eric Wheeler for the uh, workshop for the websites. So if you're in need of a website or you want to know what's going on with the lending in our area with the mortgages and the trends, um, we will have a Zoom link. Uh, it should be on the uh, on our website, stlreia.com, St. Louis Real Estate Investors Association. Or you can always just send one of us uh, a note and we'll direct you in the right direction. So nothing else. I guess we'll call it a day. Thanks for tuning in today. And we'll see you all next week. Hey, thank you, John. Thank all you right. very much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Have a great one. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Take care.